headline with that one. All right, we're all good. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today we're focused on really the most important challenge facing the state of Illinois, and that's growing more good-paying jobs in the state. Our economic growth has been too slow for too long. Uh, we need to increase the competitiveness for our state. Um, we need to attract more companies uh, to our state to create more jobs. We also need to help the companies who are already here expand um, and uh, increase jobs. That's what we're here to talk about this morning. Um, as I think most of you know, I just returned last night from a trip to Asia. It's the first of several trips I plan to take outside the country to recruit more companies uh, to Illinois and help the companies that are already here to expand. We had an extremely successful trip. I'm very excited. Many new projects, many new initiatives uh, will be underway um, uh, in the coming weeks as a result of the trip. Uh, we met with dozens of companies um, in Japan, dozens of companies in China. Both of the, those nations are huge economic partners uh, for the people of Illinois. There are more than 630 Japanese companies that are already invested in Illinois. They employ roughly 50,000 Illinoisans today, and we met with several Japanese firms that would like to uh, expand in, in Illinois, and we were pursuing discussions with them. Um, we had uh, excellent meetings as well in China. Um, China is the fastest growing investor uh, in the United States of America. Um, and we want to make sure that we get even more than our fair share in Illinois of the expanding Chinese investment in America. Uh, we're fortunate we've got more than 60 Chinese companies uh, invested in Illinois so far. Uh, they employ several thousand uh, Illinoisans. Uh, we met with one of the most successful companies in China, um, a company called Wan Chang. They chose Illinois several years ago as their North American headquarters. Um, they would like to expand further in Illinois. We had some terrific meetings with them about how to help them expand in Illinois and create even more jobs. Uh, we also had with us a senior executive from the University of Illinois, Ed Seidel. He's the Director of Innovation and Economic Development for the University of Illinois. We brought him on the trip. Um, we had some excellent meetings. Illin uh, the U of I is one of the greatest computer science and engineering schools in the world. They are highly respected in Asia, um, and we, we signed a memorandum of understanding in Hangzhou with Zhejiang University, uh, expanding a partnership between the U of I and Zhejiang University to exchange more students and to do more research and development activity together uh, to help mo drive more economic growth and innovation here in the state of Illinois. So overall, very exciting trip. Um, and uh, excited to be back home and pursue those opportunities. Here this morning, um, we're here to sign our EDGE tax credit extension bill. As, as I think most of you know, we've had an EDGE tax credit program in Illinois for years. It's an important tool in our, uh, in our tool chest uh, to help recruit companies and help uh, companies expand. Many other states around America have some version of an, uh, an EDGE tax credit program. And basically, to summarize it, what this does is provide a tax benefit to companies that add jobs in Illinois. And it allows a company that hires a person, uh, that, that employee's uh, income tax that they pay to the state, the, um, the state turns around and gives a tax, an income tax credit to the company itself. So the company gets a tax credit for the income tax that the employee pays in. Um, it's a nice incentive to grow more jobs. Um, and uh, th this now, this bill we're signing this morning uh, extends our ex uh, EDGE tax credit program out to the year 2022. It uh, recently expired and now we've extended it to the, to the year 2022. Um, there are some nice improvements in the ed EDGE tax credit bill. There are extra incentives for companies that add jobs in particularly um, economically challenged areas of the state. Uh, for companies that expand in uh, areas with high poverty, high unemployment, there are even extra tax incentives um, for those uh, companies, and uh, that's a nice advantage. Uh, I'm very supportive of that. Uh, the EDGE tax credit bill that we're signing here today also expands the transparency 
We have not had very good transparency in the past on our EDGE tax credit program, the numbers and the impact. Now this is going to require all EDGE uh, tax credit initiatives to be posted online within 10 days of uh, signing and we can all look at the implementation and understand the economic impact. So this is a good bill, moves us in the right direction to increase Illinois' competitiveness and attractiveness for companies. Um, we are fortunate we have the bill's uh, sponsors here with us today, Representative Zaleski and Senator Bush. Uh, I'd like to ask them to come forward and make a few comments, and I'll start with uh, Representative Zaleski. I'm impressed you, but I remembered all those names, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you to the Governor for signing House Bill 160 to uh, thank you to Senators Bush, uh, Representative Bellock, Representative Wheeler, Representative Harris, uh, Director McCarthy, uh, Senator Althoff. This was a joint effort among the caucuses and the governor's office and the agency to put forth a really good piece of legislation. The problem with this program in the past is um, it had been used sort of in a, in a way that um, as a shield uh, against poaching and now it's going to be used more of a sword to bring jobs. It's a very prospectively driven job creation device that we've created here. It's going to make Illinois uh, an attractive place to do business because we're going to want to grow jobs here as opposed to just being in the business of being leveraged out. So I'm excited about this piece of legislation. I'm, I'm excited that the governor's signing it today. It's one step forward uh, in, in our effort to bring businesses to Illinois, take advantage of all of our internal assets, and, and get the state uh, in a better position to, to grow jobs. So thank you to the governor. And with that, I'll introduce my colleague in the Senate, Senator Melinda Bush. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you for being here today. I'm State Senator Melinda Bush. I'm from the northeastern most part of this state. I'm really excited that we're signing this EDGE credit bill. Um, this has been a bipartisan effort to make sure that Illinois has the tools that we need to ensure that we are attracting and retaining good jobs, certainly in Lake County where I'm at, but across the state. This is an important bill. We need to make sure that Illinois is competitive. We've got a budget now, so there's no reason for us not to move forward. It's important for businesses to know that Illinois is not just open for business, but we are aggressively making sure that we are retaining good businesses and attracting good jobs. You know, as the governor said, there's been some pretty good changes to this bill. Uh, one certainly is that socioeconomically challenged areas will have a benefit for additional tax credits. It also has a job retention piece that has never been part of EDGE before because it's not just about bringing good jobs here, it's about keeping good paying jobs here. I represent an area that borders another state. These are the most highly competitive areas when it comes to retaining and attracting good jobs. This is going to give us the tools that we need in the toolbox while making sure that when businesses don't adhere to their piece of the bargain, we have a clawback provision. And if the business doesn't meet the criteria outlined in this new law, they will be required that money will go into the workforce development um, budget so that we can actually um, continue to develop our workforce. This is a fabulous bill. I'm really excited to be here signing it. And what I'm really excited about is the bipartisan effort. We came together on this, and we need to do more of that in the state of Illinois. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce uh, the director of DC no, DCEO, Sean McCarthy, um, who comes from my neck of the woods. Anyway. Uh, good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank Governor Rauner for signing HB 162. Uh, this bill will overhaul the EDGE tax credit program into 2022. Uh, it's a critical for bringing about true economic development at the local level. The EDGE program passed with strong bipartisan support. Uh, I want to thank Senator Althoff and Senator Bush, along with Representative Zaleski and Representative Keith Wheeler for their leadership and all of the legislators who got this bill across the finish line. Our mission at the Department of Commerce has always been to provide economic opportunities for businesses, entrepreneurs, and residents that improve the quality of life for all Illinoisans. Uh, and we seek to do that in the most transparent and efficient way. The EDGE tax credit program exemplifies all these points. This program now lowers the threshold for small businesses to participate, increases transparency requirements, protects taxpayers, and encourages business development in underserved areas. 
Overall, EDGE is a critical program that improves the quality of life for all Illinoisans, whether they are a taxpayer, a small business, or a large corporation looking to move or expand in Illinois. Again, thank you, Governor, and the members of the General Assembly. This is a win for Illinois. Thank you. Great. All right, then we'll sign the bill. <clears throat> Let's, it's a hang and we're going to do jobs questions if you guys want to help me sure. answer Absolutely. any any uh, jobs related questions we got. Did you get any commitments uh, on your trip to land jobs here in the state of Illinois? Um, we got no firm commitments. We've got a lot of interest and uh, uh, a number of projects that we're going to be following up on. They're pretty exciting. Governor, uh, it seemed like you were arguing in 2014 that we needed major reforms mm -hmm in order for you to develop business to get jobs. We had three years without a budget. We had the $5 billion tax increase that the Democrats essentially wanted originally. No major reforms. And now you're going out and developing business and getting jobs. Isn't that an acknowledgment that you were mistaken? You didn't have to do that for three years? Because there's no change, is there, between where you were in January 2015 and where you are in September 2017? and yet you're out there developing business. Um, we are trying every day to grow more jobs in Illinois, and I've been trying to do this from day one uh, that I've been in office. Um, I didn't want to leave the country while we didn't have a budget. I wanted to be here and because you never know when issues are going to pop. Um, I have traveled extensively outside the state uh, to Boston, New York, San Francisco, Seattle, over the last two and a half years uh, trying to recruit companies. We do have an advantage. We still today have an advantage over um, big cities on the coast in that our income tax still it's went up, um, but it's still lower than um, on the coasts. Um, that's, a, that's a strategic advantage that I've been trying to sell. Um, the reality is uh, we're growing jobs. Since I became governor, we've added, I have to go get the latest number, about 120,000 jobs, I think, is the number since I became governor. But you know what? Um, to your question, we should be growing triple, quadruple that rate. And it's because of our regulations. It's because of our taxes. Um, and I'll, I will say that the companies that, that we met with in Japan and China, who really know Illinois well, raised the issues. Property tax raised the issue regulations, raise the issue deficit spending, raise the issue of borrowing. They were, you know, they're, every, every employer is concerned about those issues. The good news is there are some companies that will take a long-term view. Their view will, is, well, you're working on solving those problems, Governor. We like your view. We like your attitude. We like what you're trying to do. And uh, we're willing to make a bet that you, in the long run, Illinois is the right place. The, the fact is, even though we have been our own worst enemy with our policies, with our regulations and our taxes, we have a great uh, workforce. We have great people, the best people in America. Um, we have the best strategic location of any state in America to access the United States and its markets. We have one of the greatest airports in the world at O'Hare Airport, and it's the gateway for commercial development between China and the United States. Um, we have incredible transportation network. We are the hub of transportation and distribution and logistics in America. Um, and we are a diverse economy with leading businesses in vir virtually every sector of the economy. Those are huge advantages. Um, and then when you combine that with our university system, the U of I, Northwestern, and the University of Chicago, um, and their research and development, we've got a lot to sell. If we could get our regulations competitive, if we get our tax code competitive, we could be the number one growing state in America. So are you and that's what yeah, we're going to try to do. Well, let me, let's, let me ask us others. Let's some other ones. Hey, Governor, can we talk about yeah. Amazon? What are you doing to lower Amazon, and how are you working with the mayor to jointly make this happen? Yeah, so um, the, it's essential that we work together as a partnership. Amazon wants 
single comprehensive um, uh, proposals. They don't want separate pieces. They don't want independent bids. Uh, they want major urban areas, and they only want to hear from major urban areas with major international type airports um, to, uh, to propose. Um, and that, that means that we as a state and we as a city of Chicago need to work together cooperatively, and we're doing that. Um, I'm in personal touch with members of the, the mayor's administration. Uh, we've got um, a, a city-state joint um, group going to Seattle tomorrow to meet with leaders at Amazon. Uh, we are develop, developing a joint proposal. The Department of Commerce for the state of Illinois, Intersect Illinois, World Business Chicago, the mayor's office, the governor's office are working hand in glove to come up with a s single comprehensive proposal. That said, I'll also say, um, as governor of the entire state of Illinois, St. Louis is also competing. And we have major population center in Metro East. We have major strategic or transportation advantages in, in, in uh, Metro East around the St. Louis area. And we will be working um, in assistance with uh, the St. Louis proposal as well, because that have, could, could, if St. Louis has some benefits that they bring in terms of their um, overall package, we want to make sure that Illinois is, is positioned to uh, be a great benefit of that. But the home run for us, and where our real focus is, is given um, metropolitan Chicago and given the power of O'Hare Airport, our real focus is, is, is here. How, so, how, how, big a, yeah. how, how big a drag on the bid? will be the state of Illinois' gigantic financial liabilities? Um, that's one drag. We have, you know, we have drags. We've been talking about them. You've heard me talk about them for <laughs> five years. Um, and we're trying to fix them. And the good news is folks know we're trying to fix them. Here's the bottom line. And the, these, the folks at Amazon and the companies we're meeting with and recruiting here, these are thoughtful people. They do their homework. If you look, I mentioned our strategic advantages. That's why companies want to be here. General Electric, I worked with the mayor to bring General Electric here. We were the, their first choice. But they said, Governor, we hope you're not going to do to us what Connecticut's been doing to us. Couldn't prove that we weren't going to do that to them. And if you look at the CEO's rankings, there's a, there's a magazine called CEO, Chief Executive Officer Magazine. They rank the attractiveness of states. Uh, from their policies, taxes, and regulations. Illinois is always ranked at the bottom. We're ranked either 48th or 49th or 50th out of 50 states. If we could move up in our rankings in, by our regulation reduction, red tape cuts, our tax cuts, and fiscal responsibility in the state, up to if we could be top five instead of bottom five, man, we'd blow the doors off. And that's what I'm trying to do. Get us up there so we're competitive. And now we, got, we just passed a big tax hike over my veto big new budget spending over my veto, we still have a $1.7 billion deficit. Oh my goodness. Your average business person looks at that and says, when are you guys going to get responsible? Get responsible. Governor, yes, Governor, Mary. Governor, 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 one, is, one is about your trip, but I'll ask that in a second. Can I just ask on this? You and the mayor working together on this? It sounds like you've got two two masters here if you've got St. Louis and Chicago. So what, who, which one's more important? Oh, I did. Oh. with one bid. No, I answered that. Chicago is clearly the, most, the more important. Well, but we've got to make sure that we're positioned to benefit um, <laughs> Illinois if St. Louis ends up being very competitive. And are you Last question. question. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, no, she, she had one of those. being in Japan about what their feelings and uh, North Korea and the concerns about North Korea. Well, that's off the jobs topic, but they're, they're deeply concerned, and I express my support for the people of Japan and support for what what's going on. Um, you know, they're deeply concerned. They've got a hostile nation right close by that's firing missiles over their airspace. That is a source of major concern. Governor, Last question. Question. Governor, yes, Governor, jobs question. You yes. mentioned the drag and needing to address the drag on Illinois finances. Could huh? you give us an update on the status of the bonding plan that would pay down that record bill backlog? We're now at, I think, 16 billion plus today. So when are you going to go to market to pay down? That uh, we're working on that over the next couple of months. Let's talk about this bonding for a second because it's getting a lot of pr it's gotten a lot of press. It solves no problem. So here's here's the challenge for us. We're 1.7 billion dollar deficit in the new budget. No appropriation to pay down debt. None. And we if we go to the bond market, unlike not paying our bills, go to the bond market, we're required by law to have at a minimum equal principal payments over 12 years. That's a major um, source of negative cash flow beyond the interest saving. 
So we need to come up with half a billion dollars roughly in, in cuts just to be able to service a bond, uh, a bond offering. We don't have that in the budget. The budget was not well thought through. It is not balanced. We're trying to fix it in our governor's office, but I'm calling on the General Assembly to start meeting with us, and we're meeting, uh, leaders are starting meeting tomorrow. We gotta fix the budget. It is not uh, balanced and is, is not in good shape. Now we're gonna try to lower our interest costs by refinancing some debt doesn't solve a problem, and it's going to require more cuts in order to service that bond Governor, offer. Thanks very much, everybody.